Okay, my friends, NASA is answering questions, they say. Now, I think I'm blocked from their website because uh, they, they don't answer mine. But it's, it's called Hashtag Ask NASA. Now, try getting a hold of them and see if you can get them to look at the things I'm presenting. Because I disagree with the things they're presenting. And if they're going to answer questions, I'd like them to answer mine. Now, here's what she has to say. Hi, I'm Nikki Fox, and I'm in charge of all sun science here at NASA. This is Ask NASA, and I'm here to answer your questions. All right, I, I don't need to go any further because I've seen what she has to present, and I disagree with it. And here's why. Okay, NASA and everyone else, please, after my questions and statements about space and the sun, stay tuned for this because I think within 30 days we can do fusion. This is charge separation. I have been working in the electron neutrino range. Absolutely electron showers, and that's what we're seeing here. This is charge separation. This is the white. These little dots are the dark carriers. And here's what, how I can say that, and, and I'm going to go into long detail at the end, but I want to go through my questions first. Hello, NASA. I have a question for you. If the sun and all the planets are being ripped through the galaxy on the arm of the galaxy, in front of all of us is a ton of particles which exist in everywhere in the solar system that I can determine because they're being spit out by all the things that are in the solar system and we are ripping through all the debris that's ahead of us. Let's just look at the galaxy first and then we're going to examine how it interacts with us. Okay, if we assume we're on one of these arms in the Milky Way or somewhere out here spinning around and obviously we will be, we will eventually go into different regions of space. You can see we may cross an arm, we may go into an open spot, we may go into a dense spot. It appears that we're getting into more dense regions, it appears to me, but I could be wrong. Regardless, we are ripping through space and concussing. Okay, this is our whole solar system is just spiraling through our galaxy, being ripped through whatever's in front of it, creating enormous friction. Literally, it's friction. Now, let's just think about what would happen if our globe, right here, spin. Oops, let me move this over here. Let's turn over this direction here. Now, here's our globe. It's spinning this way here. Not only is it spinning like this, it's the whole thing is going around our solar system, as you understand. And the whole solar system is going through space. There is a ton of interactions here. All of them create friction because everything in our atmosphere is, is particles. There is a mass. And that mass is loaded with electrons. Everything in space that we are going into is loaded with particles. It's not empty vacuum of nothing. It is impacting with our atmosphere. And there is no question whatsoever. Our atmosphere is scrubbing against our spinning planet. And between the interaction of this particles which are electrons, scrubbing these particles which are electrons, we create our magnetic field and it actually creates current running through our poles from, north to, from south to north and it sucks electrons into our earth. That is gravity and that is very very evident because static electricity, bam, right to earth. Lightning, bam, right to earth. Electricity, bzz, right to Earth. Static, boom. Any electrons instantly impact the Earth the same as light because it wants to absorb those and send them up through the poles. That's gravity. That's all it is. Electris, electrons want to be sucked to Earth. The more electrons in the package, the harder it hits Earth. 
as <laughs> simple as that. Hydrogen and helium don't have enough electron potential to come down. They go up. They don't have enough mass of electrons within the package. Right? If the package was small and they had that number of electrons, they'd hit the Earth. But the package is too big and there's not enough negativeness in that package to come down to Earth. We don't understand what we are doing going through space. We just don't understand it. Electrons flow out through the top, down, back through the bottom. And that sets up these magnetic lines of flux. And it's strictly just rubbing through the particles in space. Okay, now we go to the lepton universality issue, which shows that the Bohr model is wrong. Now let's listen to what this lady has to say. What is lepton universality? Now there are many different types of particles that make up matter. There are six types of quarks, up, down, strange, charm, top and bottom, and six types of leptons. Three of these leptons are charged, three of them are neutral. Electrons are the most common charged lepton. Alright, I work in the electron realm, but two of them back to back make a photon. Just to show you before we go any further, electrons are like this. There's a power and no power, and I have the pictures and the experiments to prove what I'm saying. Photon is light, which is two electrons back to back. However, in the Venturi, we've discovered that we can not only break a photon into its electron configuration, we can break the electrons into their positive and negativeness. That's called charge separation. That is required for fusion. And I think we can do fusion right now, but I need to be responded to and not just ignored. So let's hear what she has to say. And there is a problem with the Bohr model. Could the standard model be wrong? And it absolutely is wrong. But there are two others, the muon and the tau lepton, that behave in a similar way to the electron, but they're just progressively more massive. Exactly. And that is the problem. Everything is made of electrons. Everything. There are no protons and there are no neutrons. But if there were, they would have 1837 electrons and a neutron would have 1838 electrons. That is the issue. Therefore, when she talks about the lepton problem, is that they just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yes, because you can have one of these, or 10 of them, or 100 of them, or 500 of them, or 1,000 of them, or 1,837. And at 1,837, apparently, because of hydrogen, they say at that that's a, a proton to them. That's hydrogen one, the base, base, base hydrogen. Right? And what that is, hold on. what that is, is a ball of particles, just like that, just like this. And they're all electrons, just like that. And then there's one more that wants to get in, but this is, says, I am stable at 1837, 1838, right around there. I have just enough, and I don't want you. And he said, well, what do you want me to do? He said, well, just hang around. You can come. Just stay right out there. And if somebody else leaves, you can come in. But you, we're not going to let you in here. So just one of you can stay out there, and the rest, because that's how much pushback we have. That is hydrogen. All right, now. As they get bigger, they just go into helium and lithium and all your different things right up the line. But those are zones of stability. In between each one of these zones, not only is there 1837 particles because it's another proton number up. Well, not only that, they throw in a bunch of neutrons in between each one of these two. So you might have 20,000 particles that you could have in between each one of these. And every one of them could be an isotope. And an isotope is just like hydrogen has nine isotopes. It's not just hydrogen. 
This is the key. They they have fluffed over all the things that they never paid attention to and come up with all these silly names, charm and up and down. But anyway, this is the problem. Lepton universality. And they, they, they are gigantic. Here's the sizes. Now I work right there. This is the smallest particle there is. CERN works up in here with throwing gigantic chunks. Look at the size of these things. 0.000511, way down there. Even the muon, which is also supposed to be a small particle, is way up here, a thousand times bigger. This is hundreds of thousand times bigger. So what? when they smash them together, they just get debris. We are feeding them and crushing them together into themselves, and we are getting a stable output that's very, very obvious to see what's happening. Here's my reasoning. That's red light. Standard pulse red laser. That is accelerating red light, creating plasma. That plasma, when it comes out the other side of this accelerator, you see it's accelerating? It's obviously a particle. It's concussing at the accelerator. It's causing plasma. Plasma means that the particles are in disarray so bad that they have actually charge separated. Now, these are what photons look like. They are back-to-back -back dipoles. Positive, negative, positive, negative, up and down, and they create dipoles. If you could break that dipole apart, I mean that photon apart, you would get two dipoles called electrons. Not only that, we have broken those electrons from their positive counterpart and created charge separation. And if you can create charge separation and break these bits into tiny little pieces and they're heavier than they're supposed to, when they come back together they will reform into their lightest configuration. Excess will be energy called fusion free power. Now there is that accelerator forcing these particles to concuss with each other. Identical to what CERN does, only better, and we are using light particles, not protons, which are thousands of times heavier than what we are using. We're using the smallest particle that we know of that exists, although we did find one smaller. And you can see this is white a hundred percent. Black spot, black spot, black spot, black spot everywhere. That means these whites got rid of their black counterparts and their black counterparts stayed in their configuration which is just a dot. Remember they came through like this, dot, 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 dot. Well, the white ones are all in disarray. They're, they're in boiling. The black ones are just hanging out and they're touching each other. They're just laying around. So they don't possess magnetic regions to speak of that I can determine. They're, they're able to just lay around on top of each other, just hanging out, enjoying life. These guys don't want anybody near them. That's why there's such a... a, a, a slaughtering of white, and absolutely white, and everywhere around it is the black spots. They will come back together to make this. So what I am saying is that if we can create that charge separation with nuclear particles, which you can, same device, passive, no extra power, no miles around rings, no accelerator, real complex stuff. You're going to have to accelerate these hydrogens, absolutely, but not like you do at CERN because we're forcing them to crush into each other's regions. There's no escape for them. They don't have to hit head on. Plus they don't even think, so I've heard the other day, they think fusion you have to hit head on and make them interact so that they stick together. It's not that way. You have to make them explode so they go into so many pieces when they reconstruct they uh, go into their their most efficient configuration and that means they're going to throw off a ton of these particles. That is free energy. It's fusion energy. All right, I think I'm just going to end it up with this, but I need to make these last statements. Sunspots seem to be anchored to the sun. They go around with the sun the same place. They seem to be rubbing harder. I would say they are projections on the sun. The sun's surface is only 6,000 degrees, and the corona is millions of degrees. That's because the outside envelope of the atmosphere of the sun is scrubbing through space, as I said, against the electrons and all the particles that are in space, creating the heat 
and making it millions of degrees and negative to negative creates electronic interactions and then you get all of these uh, solar activity. Now, light is particles, fill space, case closed. It's coming out of everything, it goes every different direction, the whole galaxy is filled with it, it's quite obvious. All bodies scrub through those particles in space. Earth is only 90 degrees on the surface, the magnetosphere is 56,000. And you, again, have your magnetism. The Earth is, I mean, the Sun is all magnetism flowing everywhere. We're all magnetism flowing around the Earth, and it's because our surface atmosphere is magnetically electrons, all electrons, and out here is all electrons. <laughs> minus to minus. And we get this heat, and then we also get our magnetic field. The Earth sucks electrons to it. It's, that's what gravity is. That's all gravity is. As the Earth spins in this field, it creates a flow from south to north through, pulls the particles up, pulls them through the Earth. Any electrons hit the Earth. I talked about this, I think, before. Um, light in transit from the sun or from any luminous body into space is dark matter and it's dark energy. It's dark out there. It doesn't do anything until it concusses and that's when it hits planets or the space station or whatever it does. Now, the magnetic snap, there's a snap with a snap like that with a, um, the magnetic lines of flux out at the sun because they try to get away but they, they, they get pulled back so I get a snap and then they go flying out. Uh, they couldn't understand that. Now, Earth's atmosphere absorbs electrons. Here's where we got the issue. We have overabsorbed. We have normally the Earth will uh, take electrons, and I'm, I'm sure it, there was a time when electrons were fully accepted and things grew and everything happened. Well, things now I think have overcharged because of this reason. The Earth itself has increased in temperature quite a bit. The the, the oceans and so forth also increase in temperature, the atmosphere is increased in temperature, everything has increased in temperature. That means it has absorbed electrons because the only thing that creates temperature is excess electrons. Excess. Right? Remember, excess. What does that mean? We are at a point where our battery was charged up and now it's overcharged. Now everything, literally everything that's coming in is excess. That means we are going to heat up just like that. And that's exactly what's happening. If we don't do fusion, we're screwed. I don't care what you say. Fusion, I don't know if it's going to help either, but at least it's something that gets free energy and, and, and it's something that would be fun to try. <laughs> but I'm telling you right now, if we don't do something, the combustion, anytime you have combustion, you liberate bazillions of particles, of electrons. And they that's heat. So, you know, whatever we can do to remove combustion, they say it's CO2. I'm saying it's entering electrons into the, you know, breaking particles up and sending them out as electrons. Let's go with that. Because come from the sun, they're coming from the sun as electrons. Nothing we can do about that. But here on Earth, if we can keep them within a system and we're not spending, sending them out into the atmosphere as heat, that's... That's a game changer. Well, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know. The game may be over. But, you know, nobody's playing the game right now. They're just letting it roll. So, anyway, I, that's what I... But I want to hear from NASA. I really do. And I expect to. That's a government agency. I pay a lot of taxes. And I want to hear from them. I, I, I have every right to hear from NASA. They said they want to make statements. I want to hear what they have to say about the things that I'm claiming. Thank you. And I mean, I'm doing this respectfully, but I do get very annoyed that I've been saying these kind of things for years now, many years, and no response whatsoever from the people that I would expect to be concerned or at least respectful enough to respond. And that has not happened yet. All right, so I don't mean to have this attitude, but I, I got to be honest with you, I'm really having a hard time controlling it. I really am. I had somebody come after me today about it, and I and, and I and I apologize. I mean, it just it's a very difficult thing. I mean, that's all. I will leave it at that. Thank you.